Right, a very good morning once again. Welcome to another live broadcast. My name is Isa Phillips Akintola. I want to especially welcome everyone joining us this morning. It's been hectic this morning just trying to connect to the live stream. We've been having a lot of rain here, so I guess uh, that has affected you know the connection. But we thank God this morning once again that the Lord has granted us opportunity to see this brand new day and of course to connect it's been it's been it's been a struggle but we thank god it's a beautiful day i appreciate what the spirit of god is doing thank god for the grace to persist and to continue to you know uh, uh, just push on until one gets it right so i thank god i just you know decide to give it another try again and uh, the network seemed to have improved so we thank god this morning it's good to be alive. It's good to see another beautiful, glorious day like this. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for holding on. Thank you. I'm sure some people already thought, okay, this guy will not be able to make it today. Well, I also thought I would not be able to make it, but I just felt, okay, let me just try again. Keep trying. And that's the journey of faith. That's the history. That's the story of faith. All right? We'll just continue to try and try and try amen never give up that's the attitude the lord will have us have particularly in this new day that we have stepped into so i want to welcome you once again those joining us on facebook or youtube welcome uh we are continuing this morning on our prophetic leadership scope zadok prophetic leadership school and uh, we are on session seven for those who, who are who will be joining us from you know the youtube platform but if you're joining us from facebook i'm sure you know that we've gone beyond you know our uh, session uh, seven but uh, i just felt we need to you know look back to some principles that heaven has been emphasizing particularly regarding the nature of you know the seasons and the days that we have been brought into and a couple of things the spirit of god all right has been highlighting for us and i thank god that this school okay has afford a lot of people the opportunity at least to begin to you know have the understanding of what uh, uh the prophetic is in terms of the basic the basic understanding and that's what i've been trying to do with some of this you know material that god has you know given to us when we bless the lord that he's allow us to continue to look into this thing so as we glean more in the principles amen of 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 uh, the prophetic particularly regarding you know growing and developing in in that which is defined as a spirit of leadership i want to believe that the lord amen will allow you and i to have even a better understanding of his intention uh one of the things that we have been emphasizing is the nature of the days that we have been brought into require that we have a well solidified spiritual foundation all right because basically like we have said the foundation would definitely define what we are going to build if we don't have a solid spiritual foundation if we don't have a well defined a well robust a well integrated spiritual understanding i mean the storm and the and the wind and the and the flood and the rain that is you know f you know are uh, falling in this season will 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 cause the house to collapse but we don't want to build a man on a sinking sand we want to have a solid spiritual foundation and that is from the point that we are looking into now before i go further maybe what i should do is to, just to give us a context again there are a couple of scriptures that we've been looking into that is kind of uh, uh, or that has given us you know the right spiritual framework in how to approach i think this concept is approaching the things of the spirit needs to be done in a way that okay we are not we are not short changing the values and the standard or the intentions of, of god for our life it's important that we understand all right the how to build spiritually the bible says is that wisdom builds a house all right i mean for anyone who is into the the concept of building who's into the ministry or into you know the the, the business of building you will know that there are things that you've got to lay as foundation before you begin to deal with other things all right and it's not just enough to say we have a solid foundation we also need to have amen the understanding of how to keep amen that's foundation solid and strong such that the you know the framework that defines what we build up amen are, are you know are held together all right that's what the bible says amen that every joint must supply amen its own its own uh, uh, uh nutrients for you know for the house for the for the body to be built up and we want to believe god that all right that as we build amen 
based on that which the Spirit of God is emphasizing and revealing to us that we will have, amen, a solid structure that the, that the storms of life, that the wind, amen, that is blowing, that the flood that is coming in our day, amen, will not be able to withstand it. We believe in God to grant us, amen, the revelation of Christ, all right? Whatever we build has to be built on the revelation of Jesus. And that is why we've taken some very key scriptures, all right, that has helped us to at least streamline and, and focus what the prophetic is. We've got to focus, we've got to understand, all right, that the prophetic is beyond just a gifting that we use, all right? The gifting is the ministry, but beyond or before the ministry, all right, there is a nature, there is a structure, amen, that is a dimension of a life, of a position in God. Everything that defines God is prophetic, all right? And as, as we get to understand God and his ways, his purposes, his desire, his counsel, his intention, amen, we, we, we grow into him. That growing into him, amen, requires that we have a prophetic spirit, that we have a prophetic connectivity, all right? We, I mean, like you see this morning, I was struggling to come on online, all right? And that is because you know, the, the network was bad. If the network is bad, all right, even if you try to connect, all right, it's not going to work. Or if it works, you're not going to see, you're not going to hear clearly. And that's how it is in the spirit, all right? We must have the right connectivity. And, and so many things goes into having the right connectivity. I think the Lord just used that this morning as a parable to show us that the, the things of the Spirit requires that we get certain things right. If certain things are not right, all right, we can we can try to patch it up. We can try to you know manage it or make do. No, it, it just must be there. If it's not there, it's not there. So these are things that we have got to understand. And there are things that needs to be there in the church that we need to know. We need to have an understanding of, all right. And beyond just having the understanding, they must become the template, the foundation. They must become the value standard that drives our life it is those values amen that causes certain things in the things of god to walk all right like if you want to see the power of god work in your life all right you want to see the power of god not any other power if you want to see the power of god you want to see the anointing the grace of god you want to see healing or whatever you know flow through your life there are certain spiritual value standard all right the things of god don't work habitually in other words they don't work on their own everything about you know the spiritual things are interconnected they are interconnected they're interconnected. So if we don't understand these things, all right, we may be struggling in one area and we may get it right in one area while in the other area we don't know what's going on and we realize that, you know, the output is not working. You know, we're trying, but nothing, yes, because there are other areas of our life that we need to know, we need to understand, we need to put into perspective and that is how the things of the Spirit. So the, co co the collective, you know, reality of what God is doing in this season in time or what he did in the past and of course what he's doing now and what he's doing, what he's going to do in the future is important that we have that, you know, you know, a, a view, that we have that understanding. What did God do in the past? How did he move? Amen. What is he doing in our day? The Bible says, in the past, according to Hebrews 1, all right, that God spoke through the fathers, through the prophets in the past, all right, but in this day, he's speaking through, amen, his son, so the, so Jesus Christ has become, let me, let me, you know, uh, kind of come there a little bit so that people will understand, this is, this is supposed to be a teaching, all right, I'm not preaching, Jesus Christ, amen, has become all right, the voice of God. His life is the voice of God. You know, when we talk about the voice of God, we're talking about getting to know the heart of God. The voice of God reveals the heart of God, reveals the mind of God, reveals the desire of the Father. All right, wherever God speaks, we get to know His mind. We get to know His His intention. So, how we hear God, Amen, and how we understand what God, Amen, is saying to us, of course, through the channel or vessel that He is using, Amen, is important because the voice of God Himself, Amen. It is it's not just a message that we hear. The voice of God reveals the intentions of God, reveals the desire of the Father, reveals you know the, the, the will of God. We can't know the will of God if there's no voice of God. All right. We can't even begin to say we have amen the authority of God's word if we don't understand the voice of God. And I think that is something that is very critical. You know, yes, Samuel heard, he heard, he heard a voice, but he went somewhere else. 
He went somewhere else. He turned to someone else. Amen. He, 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 did, he didn't understand how to connect to that voice. He had to connect to a man all right, who had the experience. He went to Eli, but he heard God. So we can hear God, all right? but we may not understand. All right? We may even hear and misinterpret what we have heard. So these are all the, the, the basic dynamics that we're trying to find out. And one of the things that we have been sharing, which we're going to continue this morning, all right, is that when we have you know the basic spiritual values we have the basic biblical you know uh, 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 discipleship i like to use that word dis discipleship value standard amen discipleship means all right we have sat down like 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 mary we have sat down we have learned the things that needs to be learned there are things that must be built into our life there are things that must be structured into our values into our concept of understanding all right the the, the, the intentions of god is for us to be changed to be transformed that position of transformation allow us to be ready amen allow us to become a vessel as uh, in an instrument that god can use yes god will use anything yes he's god he will use anything but when it comes to his ministry when it comes to certain people that all right he has called out all right of course this is not just something that everybody will appreciate or you know take to you know to heart but if you believe that there is a call of god there's something god will have you do then there is a protocol there is a pattern there is a divine order order if you will there's a standard by which amen god does his things all right not like we know everything of course nobody can claim to know everything but at least this word has revealed his word has shown us certain values certain belief system his word has revealed to us certain you know uh, if you will a, a pattern of, of of dealings and if we understand those dealings all right not just read them all right we apply those dealings into our life they become amen the, the portal they become the the track they become the you know the gateway that leads us all right into the good pleasures of god because our desire amen is to please god we want to please god pleasing god is not just carrying out his work pleasing god also means the means to which we carry out amen the mindset to which we carry out amen the the the, the, the belief system to which we carry out his work is important in fact, he rewards us more, amen, of how we carry out his work than just doing the work. Anybody can do anything, all right? I mean, we can do anything. Anybody can do it. But, but God is not interested in you just doing for him. He, he, he wants us to follow the protocol. He said, take your son, Isaac, all right, to amen, Moriah, one of the mountains. I will show you. You see, God is very meticulous, He's very meticulous. He's very, he's very concerned about, amen, the instrument that does his work. You see, he, he, like I said, God can use anybody. He used the donkey, all right? He, he, he used the stick, all right, to, to part the Red Sea, all right? God will use anything and anyone, amen. In fact, till, till today, till tomorrow, he will be using Lucifer. Lucifer himself, Satan himself is an instrument in the hand of God. Everything were created for his good pleasure. No matter how things look, no matter how things seem, all right? Everything, amen are used for his glory but guess what when it comes to ministry when it comes to a uh, people he has called out for himself ah he doesn't just use them anyhow amen he takes his time he refines them in fact the scripture says the reason why we can trust the word is because the word itself amen has been tried amen like silver tried in fire in the furnace of fire seven times we can trust in the word of God because the word itself was put to test. Jesus was put to test. A voice came and said, this day I have begotten thee. Today you are my son. So we have to understand, amen, that it's important that if we're going to be, particularly in this season, if we're going to be an instrument that God is going to use to carry out his intention, if we're going to be an instrument that God is going to use to bring out his purpose, amen, the state and the condition of our heart in regards to, amen, our connectivity to his will, to his counsel, to his word, amen, to his values, amen, is very, very critical. We cannot just handle the things of God with levity. We cannot just, you know, decide to, you know, want to do the things of God because we have zeal. Zeal is no longer going to be enough. And guess what? Knowledge also is not going to be enough. Our knowledge must transcend just mental acquisition of information. We must take what we know and begin to apply them to the point that that knowledge begins to inform our values, reform, amen, our intentions, all right? So when God says wait, we wait. When God says sit there, that sitting there becomes a ministry. The ministry is what bring pleasure to the father it's not per se what we're doing because we have a church all right that has been so 
caught up in an activity. We just want to do something. Everybody must see that we're doing something. All right. Yeah. So what we see and what we are carrying out and, and to the degree that the magnitude of what we're carrying out, amen, allow people to honor us and value us. But God is not in all of that. The Bible says all we know of Enoch is that he walked with God. The Bible never said, amen, Enoch did something, did that, didn't. He walked with God, amen. And walking with God, amen, is walking for God. When we begin to walk, amen, with God, we will walk the works of God. And these are things that Jesus came to pattern for us, amen, that living a life of obedience, which I think is the most challenging thing for any human being, all right? When, when, when you decide to go against your will, when you decide to go the opposite direction of what you want to do, you know, that's the greatest challenge for anyone. At least that's the greatest challenge for me. Maybe I shouldn't speak about you, but that's, that, you know, that because God has given us a will. He, he created human beings to have a will. And God says, you know, worship to me is when you take your will and surrender it. <laughs> you surrender it to me. That's worship. Uh, something you know that uh, you want to do, but you decide, no, I'm not going to do it because there's a greater authority. There's a greater force. There's a greater spirit that says, all right, this is the way. It says, choose this path. This is the path I want you to go. There's a way that cement right, amen, and your will is saying, that is the path I want to follow. That is the way I want to go. That is how I want to build my church. That is the way I want to carry out all right that's the way everybody's doing it and everybody's getting results but there is a voice that said to you i don't want that way this is the way i want it this is the pattern now, now that's ministry that's ministry ministry is when you decide to follow the will of god the ways of god amen the the, the, the desires of god god has a desire amen regarding our life regarding his church god has a will regarding amen how he wants us to represent him amen even in this season in time there is something god is saying regarding this moment regarding this season regarding amen this this generation there is a voice of god coming for and that's why the the prophets are there to know to hear the voice of god amen and to say god this is what God is saying. Not that way. We're not going that way. We're going this way. <laughs> this is the... Now that takes a will. That takes your will coming under. That, that takes a will that, that is being subjugated amen, under the authority of God to obey. It's not an easy thing. All right? you, that's why they say you must come to the place of death. Death is dying to your ways. It's dying to your own pattern. Dying to your own idea. Dying to amen, how you want to do it. How everybody is doing it and you're seeing results. <laughs> Somebody says everybody is doing it that way. But can't you see the result? Indeed they're having results. But he doesn't want it that way. So ministry is not, it's not the definition of how men define success. It's not how people, amen, define, you know, success. It's not how they define life. It's not, how, no, no, no. Ministry is living your life, amen, in the will of God, in the will of God. The central, you know, pleasure of the Father, amen, in ministry is that we give him his desire. And this is what Jesus did, amen. So Jesus is the pattern. All right. So when when we when we talk about the prophetic, this is is from this point that we understand it. It's from this point that we must approach it. So we don't we don't run after secondary things. We don't run after things that are not you know you know the heartbeat of the Father. All right. It's not about that you part the Red Sea. It's not just about that you are able to you know heal the sick. It's not just about you are able to raise dead people. It's not just about being able to use His word. No 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 no. Is the word of God using you? Is you coming under the authority? and the influence amen of god's word that is ministry and of course that's the prophetic because the prophetic is to first of all capture the mind of god what what is the intentions of god what is the desire of god why amen does he want us to live the prophetic is about living life amen in in a divine pattern in fact let's remove that word divine ministry the prophetic amen is living life in accordance to how he wants us to live life when we're prophetic it affects every area of our life it affects amen how we interact how we move how we connect how we relate who we marry how how we relate in our relationship amen how we treat people you know the prophetic is a lifestyle and that is the heart of ministry ministry is a life all right. So, so I just quickly want to, you know, like I said, I want to read one or two, two scriptures that have become a kind of a blueprint, a pattern for us. One of the scriptures that we looked at, we looked at. All right. Of course, if you're watching from YouTube, you will notice that I, I opened to, uh, uh, um, I've opened to a, uh, what do you call it now, a PowerPoint that speaks into 
prophecy. But before I go into prophecy, all right, uh, um, before I go into prophecy, I'm going to go back to the definition we looked at the, the last time, and then we're going to pick up from there. But before I go into all of that, let, let me let me read the uh, uh, scripture because you see there are certain key scriptures. You know, you know, the things of God are like all scattered around the Word of God. All right, principles are scattered all across the Word of God. So it, 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 it's that, and that's why they, you know they've given us you know ministry, the fivefold ministry. Like one of the ministry of the prophet, okay, is to be able to scan through the scripture and find out and bring out all right key scripture that speaks into various areas of you know human development all right yes that speaks into various areas of spiritual growth all right that speaks into various areas of you know how god will have us live life all right that, at least that's one of my grace and calling and ministry all right that i have the grace to look into the word of god all right and and just pick out and pick out and put all together all right and then you have if you will you know a bunch of of, of values or principles that speaks into one area of life all right god speaks into various departments of our lives but you see, if we don't labor in the word to find out, all right, what is God saying? One can just take one strand of scripture and run with it, all right? And that may, you know, cause a lot of trouble. So, you know, uh, the, the, the ministry of a true, you know, a uh, uh, servant leader, all right, is to look into the word of God. Of course, the spirit of God will be directing and say, okay, that one, you take that one, you take that one, you take that one, you take that one. You put all together, then you hear the voice of God, all right? God is, God is still speaking. In fact, in fact, the scripture, amen, is prophetic by design, all right? Because what we read in the scripture, all right, is the heart of God, is the mind of God, is the desire of God, amen, regarding those who disobey him, amen, is the will of God regarding those, amen, who will live according to his good pleasure, amen, is the, the word of God reveals to us what is, what is going to happen in the future, but the word of God is also telling us about how to live our life in the moment. The word of God is showing us, amen, how to, how to define our manhood so if you want to understand what what manhood is amen all right what is the intentions of god for man you look into the word of god not into what some psychologists say not into what amen some globalist and humanist you know uh, 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 ideologies and philosophies are saying the word of god defines to us amen the 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 the, 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 the you know the definite you know standard of human existence amen the word of god shows us how to raise our children if you want to start amen a business the word of God gives you the blueprint. You see, the word of God is prophetic. The word of God is instructive. Amen. The word of God is educative. Amen. The word of God, hallelujah, is transformational. If you want to have a, a authority, you know, as, as, a gov as a government, you want to be able to know how to lead people, read and study the word of God. The word of God, amen, is the comprehensive will and standard of God. Amen. Compile, amen, in this. So when, when we have the word of God, we get to know the word, the will of God, the heart, the heart of God, the counsels of God. All right. So, so and then, this is why the word of God must always be, amen. The values and the standard of our reference regarding any area of life. I don't care how how complex that area is even regarding science do you know the word of god amen is scientific the word of god is scientific if you read the word of god you will find things amen that science is still trying to discover is all there in the word of god all right because the word of god is the wisdom of god revealed is the wisdom of god in manifestation is the wisdom of god amen in, in expression when you read amen <laughs> you think all right you're just reading just you know just just information by the time the holy spirit begins to open your eyes is to what has been written down you'll be you'll be blown away because the word of god amen is the compression amen of the voice of god and that's why we need to read the word of god with the spirit of god so i i wanted to i, I wanted to show you one or two scripture before i go into you know my my notes of course what we're doing is basically to lay foundations and framework of how to grow in what we call the prophetic spirit because the prophetic spirit is what introduces us amen to what we define amen as the prophetic ministry or the prophetic gift if you don't have a man prophetic spirit it will be very difficult amen it will be hard pressed for you to develop amen and begin to function in the prophetic amen, uh, uh, office a lot of people today who claim to be prophets you discover that they're actually flowing amen in a foreign spirit amen in a new age spirit some have 
allow all kinds of demonic, you know, satanic, you know, powers, all right, to, to, to influence their lives. So while they're talking prophetic, amen, but if you're discerning, amen, if you're one that can pick into the things of the Spirit, you will notice that, amen, come on, something is wrong. What you're saying may seem to be right, but the Spirit behind what you're saying, all right, is certainly an Antichrist spirit. It's not aligning. And that's why it's important, the Bible says, we must test all spirit we can't test the spirit if we don't have a man a standard a basis of test how do you test something if you don't have you know the right standard the right value for you to measure something you must have a scale that's the point the word of god is the scale amen that allows us to be able to measure things amen the word of god is the it is is, is the laboratory amen that allows us to test if something is right or wrong but if you don't have amen the spirit of the word in you if you don't have christ in you if christ has not been formed in all the faculties of your life how do you get to test if something is right or wrong no, you're going to base what you're testing on, you know, your physical evidence. That was a mistake, all right, Joshua and, and the rest made. The Bible says when the Gibeonite came, they sampled the things, you know, you sample it. You know, you know, you know if you say if you're walking in the bank, particularly if you're, if you're a teller, all right, the, you know, you are, you, are easy, you are easily able to pick a fake note, all right, from, you know, from, from the original. Why? Because you're used to, you know, uh, uh, money. You, you can easily feel the texture of, you know, the original. When you feel something contrary to that original is easy all right for you to know that no, no, that's that's a fake note no matter how it looks no matter how well cut the size and and and, and the print looks all right just by touching it you can feel it all right but in the things of the spirit you cannot reduce the things of the spirit to just how 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 the texture feels you you, you no 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 you have to test it by the, you say test all spirit how do you test the spirit if you don't have a high greed if you don't have a higher capacity if you don't have a higher you know a, a spiritual you know a, a understanding if your spirit is not advanced and mature in the things of the spirit how do you test another spirit so you see why we say we need to really get to know, amen, uh, 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 what is called the, 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 the prophetic spirit. Now, the Bible says in Amos chapter 2, I'm going to read Amos, then I'm going to read uh, Joel. I'm just trying to, thank you, Father. Excuse me. I'm just trying to bring some uh, uh, scripture as as context and and and, uh, uh, and highlight to what we are dealing with in Amos chapter chapter four chapter nine verse eleven says in the last day I will restore we're in the day of restoration the last day I will restore amen David's fallen tent of course we know that this is this is a prophetic scripture that speaks you know vastly into all right the the, the activity of of the rebuilding amen of of you know the temple and of course when we're talking about the temple we're not just talking about the temple in Jerusalem while they're trying to build that amen but we understand that what God is talking about amen is a structure of life is a dimension of a people in the earth he said don't you know that you are the temple of God don't you know that you're the temple your body is the temple of the living God so we are the temple that the Lord is restoring, all right? And the reason why he's restoring that temple is not for some activity to be carried out there, carried out there, all right? It's for him to be able to inhabit that temple. The reason for us being the temple of God is for him to be, to be able to inhabit us. And when we talk about God's habitation is that amen, he, he's able to flow through us, live through us. In him, amen, we live, we move. In him, we have our being. But he also wants to live in us. He wants to move in us. He wants to have his being through us. He wants our life, amen, to become the expression of his design earth. People should be able to look at us and see God like they did in Antioch. When they looked at them, they said, we perceive these men have been with Jesus. Even though they're unlearned even though they didn't speak like us even though they are not you know dressing you know and looking they don't have all the nice thing around but we perceive that they have been with jesus jesus is incarnated in them though he's though he has ascended amen but he's, he's, he's alive in them through his spirit that is what we're talking about when we talk about the restoration amen of the temple of god that he our life becomes the expression the extension amen of his glory of his presence of his power he said in the last day i mean I, i'm sure we know that we are in the last day the last day means, amen, the day of the nearness of his kingdom, the day of the nearness of his power, of his glory. 
Amen. The day of the nearness, the day where the activity in the earth is speaking, amen, to us the comings of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day, amen, of his coming. These are the days of his coming. Amen. And and how we live life in the in the day of his coming ought to change. We ought to be changing our garment. Our garment ought to be reflecting, amen, a condition, a caliber of people, amen, who are preparing, amen. When you're preparing for in the coming of the bridegroom, amen, you as a bride, amen, must must get yourself ready. You must, you know what you wear. You know how you how you dress, amen. Our dress code must change because we perceive it's coming. All right, we, we can't say the bridegroom is coming and then we go into slumber and we go into all kinds of things and we live life as if we don't care. And this is why God is speaking to us in this day, amen, where we say God, amen, once again is, is opening the nations up to, to again to us era right? we're coming out of the ark and we're declaring and we're proclaiming reset we're coming out out of the ark and we're proclaiming amen the nearness of god it is for us to be able to change our garments all right to to align ourselves to that wine skin that will prepare us amen to be able to receive whatever god wants to do he's coming all right, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and we like it or not, he's gonna come. But the, that coming, amen, it's not just to take us away, like people will say, rapture. No, it's not just to take us out because the, uh, the, the antichrist is coming, the man. No, 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 it's coming is to be able to reign in us when he comes, it takes dominion. When he comes earlier, he walks through us. He's saying, The last day, I will restore the tabernacle of David. That word, restoring the tabernacle of David, means that, amen, a dimension of people like David will emerge in the earth. Earth. We will see the days of David again in the earth earlier. The power, the authority. We will see the flow. In fact, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. While I'm speaking this, this is a confirmation of, of something the Lord dropped in my spirit. You know, yesterday and, and, and later on, maybe I'll speak about that. All right. Listen, friends, in David, we find all of the five dimensions, if you will, of Christ's flow. David was, David was a shepherd, all right? David was a psalmist, all right? David was a prophet, amen? David was a warrior. David was a king, if you will. Those are, those are a reflection, amen, of, of, the, of, the, of the dimension of the ascension. You see, God will always do things in shadow before he brings us to the substance, if we don't understand the shadow, amen, then we need to go back to the school and, and sit and learn under the tutor so they can teach us. Because when the substance come, all right, we will not know how to connect. That's why we have to go back and learn certain principles, certain value standard, all right, in David. David is a pattern for us, amen. We have studied so many lives. We've studied Noah. We've studied, amen, uh, Enoch. We, we're still studying them, amen. But you've got to understand what one of the key things that would define the character, the nature of the prophet in this last day is that amen god will restore the tabernacle the tabernacle is a life amen the tabernacle is an order amen is a pattern of existence and in the tabernacle of david all of the threefold dimension of the outer court the inner court the holies of holy has been collapsed into one order so in the tabernacle of david you don't just have a man or right, claiming oh i'm a prophet i'm a, in fact let me say this this is just what the Spirit of the Lord dropped drop in my spirit yesterday while I was just interacting and looking at one or two things. And, and, and I felt the Lord was saying to me, as I, I, have, I have promoted you, I've promoted you to another dimension. And I'm like, oh, yes, Lord, I'm, I'm receiving this promotion. And the promotion is, henceforth, be not called be not called a prophet Isaiah, be called brother Isaiah or elder Isaiah. Be not called prophet Isaiah, but be called brother Isaiah or elder Isaiah. And I said to the Lord, you mean that's a promotion? He said, yeah, it's a promotion. And now he just gave me the meaning of that word, amen, of promotion. Because when you begin to enter into this dimension that, you know, we're coming into, you are no longer limited by the title of an office. You, you have been positioned as an elder at the gate, and those who are positioned at the gate are brothers. You say, doesn't that sound like, you know, you know, you're being demoted? No, who says the term brother is a demotion? 
The term brother means, amen, one who, who has covenant with his other brother. One, amen, who understand. In fact, the word brother, it means the one who live, amen, within the brotherhood of the spirit. One who has joined affinity, amen, with his own, with his pair. All right? This is not something that, you know, one takes lightly and takes, you know, uh, 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 you know with levity. No, this is, this is important to me. I, I thought, okay, I'm just going to keep that to myself. But as I began to look at, you know, this scripture now, it, it that, that's that word just came back to my spirit. You know, I'm, I'm not one who that uh, call myself. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't encourage people calling me prophet. I, I, as much as I like it, that's my office. But but I, I also sense in my spirit, all right, that God is saying, well, what happened in the day that I I take you beyond the prof that, that office? And and of course, He has taken me beyond the office. All right, we can live life beyond the office. It doesn't mean that, amen, you're no longer a prophet again. You're still a prophet. It just means that, amen, all of the, all of the ideas and the, and the, if you will, the, the, the things that people have connected, all right, to, to, to that name, either for good or for the worse, all right, is no longer an attachment to you, all right? I mean, Jesus was the rabbi, but we call him Jesus. Jesus was the prophet, but we call him Jesus. Jesus was the apostle, but we call him Jesus. Amen. He is the teacher. We, we, we still call him, you know, in fact, the best the best title we give to him, amen, is rabbi. And that's the best title they give to him. He's the teacher, amen. He's the teacher that teaches us, amen, how to be prophetic. He's the teacher that teaches us how to be apostolic. He's the teacher that teaches us how to be shepherds, amen. He is, he is all in all. And we're coming into that reality where we want to have all of Christ. So if you want to have all of Christ, you have to have a, a, you know, a common denominator that defines who Christ is. And I think that title, amen, a brother or, you know, an elder. Of course, there are a few people who already call me an elder. I mean, that's for years. But, you know, that's something that we do among ourselves. But, but now, this is something I want, amen, people to, 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 to refer me to. All right? I'm a prophet, yes, but I'm a brother and I am an elder. Well, at least for those of us that are watching me, you're able to hear this for the first time. This is important because we are tracking what God is doing in this brand new day. You say, but what has that got to do? <laughs> You'll be surprised. You'll be be surprised amen that god is renewing us he's, he's reforming us he's transforming us amen he's undressing us and he's cloaking us again amen with the cloak of humility he's bringing us amen to a place where we can amen have that authority and that grace and that wisdom that capacity to be able to speak and things begin to happen i give you this testimony the the, the, the brother i told you that i prayed for you know uh, um you know uh, friday that came to my house drunk and prayed for him and God just healed him. I was in my office and the, the, my, my, my wife just said to me, somebody's waiting for your answer. Somebody's looking for you. And I went outside. He had, he had, behold the brother. He said, I came to thank you for what you did for me. This was yesterday while it was raining and cold. He said, I just came to say thank you for what you did for me. He said, you know, since you prayed for me, I've been sober. I've not gone back to drinking and I feel so light. In fact, the, the, the person I asked you to pray for, because after praying for him, he asked me to pray for one woman. I prayed for, said the woman has got all kinds of things. I, I prayed for her. He said, I wanted to bring the woman. He said, but I'm going to lie to you. I'm living with this woman, but we're not married, but I'm living with her. I said, it's fine, but you know what you need to do. You need to give your heart to the Lord. You need to make right with God. You see, God has a way of moving in our day. But the key is, he came to thank me. I, I, it's, it's been a while. I was saying to my wife, it's been a while that I've seen such a thing. That tells you how God touches this person's life. But guess what? I'm only saying that the more we respond to God, the more we respond to his ways, his will, the more, amen, we, we, we get to carry his power. Yes. The things of God are not are not are not free. They are not free. No, no, they are not free. If you ever think that oh, I'm just gonna get this thing, no, 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 no. There are things. That's why I keep talking about divine transaction, spiritual transaction. There are things you will have to let go. I just said earlier on when we began. I said our will. Amen. Must must be laid down. Must be let go for the will of God. Amen. You've got a will. He gave you a will. That's part of what makes you you. But he said, if you're going to worship me, you have to lay down your will and take my will. If you're going to please me, if you're going to serve me, you have to. That's why you need the ear and ears. And I heard that voice yesterday. This is what I want you to do. 
Henceforth, be not called prophet Isaiah, be called brother Isaiah or elder Isaiah. So this is the word I'm declaring to those of us watching me. If you're listening to me and you know me, you refer to me as, please refer to me as elder Isaiah or brother Isaiah. I think that's what God the Father wants and that's what I want for myself. And of course, for the generation that we are raising, we have to pattern for them. We have to show them amen, a more excellent way we're coming amen to that more excellent way we're living the realm of what is good oh yeah there's a sense of honor when somebody call you you know prophet isaiah if you will it might just be taking something from you that ought to be given to the father but i've never been i mean that does not occur to me but i don't know what the lord is doing after all we're all following him what is god saying to you about your own life. Now, this is what God said to me about, but, but it doesn't have to say anything to you, right? You need to be, you need to be, you need to be fine with where you are, but as you track with him, there will always be adjustments. Nobody walks with God without getting adjusted. Nobody walks with God, amen, without getting adjusted. When you walk with him, he will they will adjust you. There will be something they'll be pointing at. There'll be something they'll be telling you you did well. But there will be something else they'll be telling you you need to fix that area. Yes, that's the story of the seven churches. Yes, this one thing I have against you. But you've been good in this. You've been done this. You've done that. You've, but this one thing... We've got to start it. We've got to start it. So God is restoring the tabernacle of David. I, 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 I want to believe that that is clear, friends. The Lord is restoring the tabernacle of David. He said, I will repair the broken, the broken places and restore his ruins. God is, God is restoring his church. His true church, amen, as he's judging the church that has misrepresented him, as he's judging the fake order, as he's judging, amen, what men set up in the name of church, amen. God is restoring his own church. God is rebuilding his own church, I mean, and we are the church, all right? That is one scripture that we are building on. So, like I said, remember, this is just, you know, a nice, you know, foundational, uh, 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 you know teaching you know for those who maybe have run with the prophetic but did not have some basic foundational you know standards and and values this is what we're dealing with all right so be, bear with me if you are one of those that are looking for the advanced you know a uh, prophetic you know uh, teachings uh, please uh, bear with us and bear with those ones that are still growing up because i've got all kinds of people following us we've got those amen that are still you know immature and we've got the mature ones amen we've got babies amen we've got you know elders we've got you know, apostles, we've got bishops, we've got all kinds of people following us, amen. But bear with us. Let us lay this foundation well. Let us build this solid, amen, spiritual framework so that we all can grow thereby. We all want to come to the place, amen, of spiritual maturity, amen. Now, another scripture that we build this prophetic uh, training or teaching upon, remember when we say the prophetic, we're also dealing with leadership, all right? When you're prophetic, you ought to be able to lead in every area of life. You ought to to know what God is doing. You ought to know, amen, the heart of God, the mind of God regarding every area of life. Okay, so this is another scripture that we are building on. Uh, Joel chapter 2 verse 28 says, and it shall come to pass, all right, that in that day, in that last day, the Bible says, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon all mankind, upon all human beings. I want you to know that scripture because it's so easy for us to miss that statement. God says in the last day, I will pour out my spirit Remember, the spirit of God is prophetic by nature, by design. What is prophetic? To know the heart of God, to know the mind of God, to know the intentions of God, amen, and to walk in the progressive revelation of his counsel or desire. The more we do that, the more we get to know, amen, the heart of God. So the prophetic is seeking, is bringing out, all right, the mind of God. He said, I will, then God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And I remember sharing this years ago, and I said, when we talk about God pouring out His Spirit, what comes to mind? Of course, we, we think of the giftings, you know, you know, being able to cast out demons and heal the sick and, you know, and raise the dead and give, you know, prophetic word and all of that. But those are basically the manifestations of a fruit, 
All right. So God pouring out Himself is basically pouring out His life, His nature. I will pour out my spirit. All right. The spirit is what defines, Amen. The the the, the, the things that we that we represent, that we are, or that we carry out. All right. The life of the flesh, Amen, is in the blood. The blood is the spirit, if you will. Without the spirit, there is no life. If if the life, Amen, that is in you, if the blood in you is drained, you're dead. You know, you're as good as dead. All right. So when God says, "I will pour out my spirit," He say, "I'm gonna release my life, my." nature my ways my values all right my my standard everything that deals with who god is is captured within his spirit so as god pour out his pour out his spirit we ought to be understanding or be, be being able to align to his ways his will his desire all right and then the, the the giftings will follow because the giftings is just a given i mean if you live by the spirit you will walk in the power of the gifts amen if you live by the spirit amen you will live you will function amen in the power hallelujah of the spirit he said, i will pour out my spirit then he went forth. they say your sons and your daughters will prophesy <laughs> The prophesy. The word prophesy means they will speak forth my will. They will speak forth my mind. They will speak forth my desire. They will speak forth my intention. All right. Yes. They will express. Their life will become the expression, amen, of my will. Because indeed that is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is the expression, is the proclamation, is the declaration. Beyond just words, lifestyle is one of the key ways, amen, we express the spirit of the, prof of the prophetic. Lifestyle. What we do, where we go, who are our friends, all right? How we live life, all right? So we're not just talking about something verbal. If the prophetic is beyond the verbal, you know, uh, 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 position. In fact, the prophetic, where we're going to look at that later on in our, in our notes, you can see that it's beyond just words. It's first a life, it's a condition, it's a state, it's a position, it's a mindset, it's a thought pattern. Is a level of imagination. All of this must be flowing into the stream, into the life of God. I will pour my spirit, amen, upon your sons and your daughters. Say they will prophesy. Say your old men will, will dream dreams. Your young men will see vision. Yes. So, you see, the characteristics of the outpouring. Now, many times we run with the characteristics without amen, understanding the, the, the nature of the spirit, Every seed or every spirit will bring forth after his kind. All right. If it's the spirit of God that is poured out and we, our prophecy or what we're declaring, amen, is contradicting the character of God, then something else is what we're dealing with. Amen. And, and, and I think that is something that is very, very vital that we deal with, that we, we don't forget, we don't take for granted. All right. If we say we're representing God via, you know, what we call ministry, all right, by the declarations or how we represent God, all right, you know, we say we're prophetic. And in our church, we've got this big chair, this two big chair, one for the mom of the house and one for the papa of the house. These two big chairs. And the chair basically dwarf every other thing. And the, the projection of our life, amen, within the structure of the community of God's people shows the people that they must look at us, that we are the image. We're not prophetic. You say, what does that go? The Bible says they sat on Moses' seat. How we live life. When you do things and you're, all you're doing is to project yourself, you're not being prophetic. You see, God told me, say, I want you to be to be known as a brother and as an elder. That is God bringing me to a place where I can better function in the higher dimension of my calling, of my grace. It doesn't take my position as a prophetic. No, he never took that from me. He just said, I'm, I'm promoting you. The way up is the way down. Is the way down. And the more we understand that we are rooted in Christ, ah, the more the stem and the branch will go up. Let me go quickly into my into my into my uh, uh, PowerPoint. At least for those who are watching from YouTube, all right. So what we what we began to do the last time we met was we began to define, amen, what the prophetic is, what prophecy is, and of course, there's one more thing we define: prophetic prophecy and prophesy. All right, yes. So we already did 
uh, let me see what we have done. Yes, we did prophetic. Maybe I should go back to the, the you know, the, the definition of prophetic again. All right. Of course, if you want to check this, you can look at it later on. You can check this on YouTube. All right. If you want to see that, you know, the PowerPoint presentation, you can see that on YouTube. All right. Because we're also broadcasting live from YouTube. Yes, we said the prophetic. The, we said the prophetic is a generic term that encapsulates the very core character. So when we say something is prophetic, that's what I'm trying to define. Now, this is very, very vital, all right? This is prophetic 101, all right? This is growing in the spirit 101. When we say something is prophetic, all right, we're talking about a generic term that enca the, the encapsulate. The word encapsulate means it covers, all right, you know, capsule. All right. In a capsule, you've got the shell. All right. But in the capsule, you've got the medicine. All right. It's in the, you see, the medicine is in the capsule. So when you are taking, when you're taking the medicine, you take the capsule, is right? Because yes, the air is the medicine in the capsule, it's covered up, and then you take it as a pill. All right. So there is so much within that capsule that brings healing to your body. Now, that's the image I have when I say something is prophetic because people use that term, prophetic, prophetic, prophetic. And you know, we limit limited to prophetic dancing, prophetic giving, prophetic, all of it. I'm trying to help us to, you know, like I said, these are foundational, you know, teachings, but these foundational teachings are important in understanding and in appreciating and even connecting with the advanced dimension, amen, of the prophetic, if you will. So we say the, the prophetic, Listen to this. There's a definition here. Definitions are very important. The prophetic is a generic term, amen, that encapsulates the very core character of the nature of the activities of God's life and light within the expressions of truth. Let me take that again. The, the prophetic is a generic term, or rather, encapsulates that takes the entire medicine, the entire values, the entire order, whatever it is, all right, it encapsulates the very core. The core, when you say something is a core, it means it's the heart, is the main thing, is the main frame, is the heart of something, all right? Uh, yes, in, 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 the, in, the human, in the human structure, in the human system, all right? I'm not talking about it biologically now, all right? The heart is the most important part, all right? If your heart stops beating, you die. You're dead. Uh, you know, that's why somebody faint. The first thing they try to resuscitate that person. Yeah, right? If you drown, they try to resuscitate the person. Because once your heart starts beating, every other thing about your life is, is you know, is, doesn't matter. You know, you know? So, so it's important that the heart, the heart of the prophetic is what we're dealing with right now, right? So the, the, the generic term, the prophetic is a generic term that encapsulates, the, listen to this, the character, the character nature. You see, you can pretend to be anything, but your character is still the, your character. You see, when you say change, we're not saying change your room, change your, change your dress. No, they change your heart. God said, turn to me. When he said, turn to me, he said, turn your heart to me. All right? There are things that are important. When God is dealing with humans, he's dealing with their heart. He said, these people draw near to me with their mouth. He said, but their heart is far from me. Yes. All right? I can pretend to be anything, but if my heart is not right, then I'm, I'm, I'm an hypocrite. You see, the heart is very, very critical. The condition of the heart. When God says he's restoring the tabernacle, what is he talking about? He's restoring that state of a heart that has an opening, a connection to him. All right. So the prophetic is a generic term. So when you say prophetic, somebody can say I'm prophetic, but that person may not be prophetic. Because being prophetic does not mean that, all right, you, you, you're given a right, prof you're given a prophetic word. That word may not, amen, represent God's counsel, God's plan, God's purpose, amen, God's desire. So it's important that we understand this. We said that the prophetic is a generic term that encapsulates the very core character nature. Listen to this, nature of the activities of God. So that when God is doing something, when you see God is, a, God is walking, God is moving, God is busy, or Christ is moving, the Holy Spirit is moving, that that thing, that activity that God is doing, all right, that's prophetic, all right. If if God if God ministered to you to do something, all right, that ministration and how you respond to God is prophetic. You see, God can say, "I want you to bless somebody," all right, and you can go bless the person and screaming the blessing all over the show, and God says, "Sorry, but you've received your reward because I never said when you bless, you must, you know, make it open." I, I, I saw I, I saw I saw a caption not too long ago on you know Facebook. 
And this 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 just captured you know this idea of you know social media thing and here's this you know person of course everybody's under lockdown so this person of course is, is trying to go give food you know to another family and here is the person with the selfie all right you know he is this person is giving the food but he's taking the you know he's taking capturing what he's doing I, 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 mean, I just laugh. I say, but this just does it because that's what that's what we do. You see, you're doing the right thing. You're giving food, but now you're taking the selfie, you know, just to show people that say, I'm, I'm good. I'm doing well. I'm, you know, I'm assisting people. The Lord say you have received your reward. So the heart, the heart of what we do, the motive of what we do is, is highly crucial. You see, God, ministry is not the act. Ministry is the heart of the act. Ministry is not an act. If I was bothered about, you know, the act of ministry, only God knows that I will never, I will not be where I am. I won't be sitting here. You see, if the Lord has not dealt with us, certain things we will not accept. Because we will see it as demotion. We will see it as, you know, uh, uh, too low for us. You see, when, you, when God asks you to do something and you see it as too low, no, this, this is, you know, this is bringing me down. This is making me look then you don't know what ministry is. Because ministry, amen, is the highest honor that they can accord a person. When they call you into ministry, no matter how that thing looks in the human realm, no matter how, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, 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 disconnected and, and ignoble and, and, and rejected, that thing may look to human eye, but that's not how heaven sees it. See, that's why in the prophetic, we must have our eyes adjusted, first of all, amen, to the values of heaven. When we talk about prophetic sight, we're talking about seeing things, amen, from the ascended realm. We're seeing things, not from our own human realm, all right? We're seeing things, not from our own carnal human belief. No, we, we're not doing things for people to see and please us. We want to be, of course, we want people to approve what we're doing, but our motive should not be first to man. They say we rather obey God rather than man. You see, to a lot of people, when they look at my life, they won't see me as somebody that is successful in ministry. You know why? Because they, they're not seeing all the big things, you know, that we are, you know, are, are, are caught ministry, are, are caught to a successful. They say that man is a successful man. The question is, what defines a successful man or a successful ministry? You see? So if we cannot get all of this thing right, then we have missed it. And this is why I'm taking time to explain this. Because, oh, the way we throw this word prophetic around this day is just so, I mean, when, when everything is prophetic, prophetic, prophetic. God help us. So the, 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 the generic term, all right, this prophetic is a generic term that captures the core character nature of God's activity. Of God's activity or the activities of God's life. You remember the life of God is dispensed. Uh, the life of God is not stationary. When we say the life of God, you see the life of God at work. All right. Whenever you see the life of God, you will see the light of God. They are, they are, they are together. All right. You remember I said some time ago, the things of the of God, Amen, are always in companionship. You never find one thing of God, amen, operating and then another thing standing. No, no, no. Wherever you find wisdom, you will find where understanding. Wherever you find knowledge, amen, you will find the fear of God, amen. Wherever you find counsel, you will find the power of God at work. They are always together. Good teaching, right? So, the prophetic is a generic term that it comes to live the very core character nature and the activity of God's life or light within the expressions of truth by default by default the word of God both spoken amen and written are prophetic because they seek to bring to bear the eternal mind of God they seek to reveal the eternal mind of God all right the prophetic is an environment I love this the prophetic is, is the environment or an environment that allows the liberty of the spirit and the expression and the express release of the mind of God. L listen to this. This is very important. The prophetic is, amen, the environment, amen, that allows the liberty of the spirit and the, and the express release. Remember the Bible says, where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Now, 
God is everywhere. The Spirit of God is everywhere. God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. Amen. The power of God is everywhere. The Spirit of God is everywhere. All right. You don't need to invite him. He's there. But guess what? Where you acknowledge him and allow him to take precedence over your own will, over your own way. <laughs> I told you again, this is the battle. This is where the work is. This is where the challenge is. All right. That God is here. And if he's there, you step aside. You say, have your way. Not my will, but your will be done. That's the prayer of Jesus. These are the two highest prayers you can pray in your life. Not my will, but your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is done. There is no other prayer greater than these two prayers. Every other prayer is centered around these two prayers. Pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. When our will begins to surrender to his will, we become more like God. We reflect more of his counsel and purpose and desire in the earth. Wherever God can find a man, a people who will push aside their will and embrace his will, ah, God will work wonders. God will move. Like I said to you, you know, when this man came and said, I, I, I mean, drunk, he's drunk, and he wants to talk to me. I will insist, I'm not going to talk to you, you're drunk. And in fact, that was what I was doing. I was saying, no, no, but how can you talk to me when you're drunk? We see, I needed to hear again and see that that word, you know, that, that the way he came is not the issue. It's me listening to God. You see, somebody can come to you, can, can relate to you from a very proud way, from a very negative way. If you react back to them, ah, you miss God. You will miss God. You miss God. That's, very imp that's why it's important that we are not reactive to people's reaction. Before we, re before we react, take time. Okay, God. And you see, listening to God as something that you must do in split second. That is not prayer. You go pray. Oh, hallelujah. God, so what are you saying? Should, no, no. You need to give an answer. You need to respond immediately. So you must have what I call, amen, a, 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 you know, a, a, a broken heart. A broken and a contrite heart. Your heart, yes, you, you, you know you have a standing about what needs to be done. But in the split second, you're also able to hear God. All right, sir. Okay. All right. All right. No, no I'm not going to accept it. But you turn back. You say, okay, but I'm going to accept it. Come. Well, I, but make up your mind. Well, I'm making up my mind. <laughs> because I must listen to Ed Quarter. I must, I must hear what he's saying. I must hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. But he, he, heaven is not some far distance. Earlier. Heaven is in your heart. You have to you know, tune to that frequency. You have to turn to that frequency. You have to be in tune to that frequency. Amen. God, this thing doesn't look right, but what are you saying? They say, don't look at what is right. See the heart. <laughs> Samuel was in the house of Jesse. He's looking at all the guys. Say, hey, this one, this one. This. But God said, no, 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 no. Left to Samuel, he would have chosen the, the you know, the, the person he felt, amen, was qualified. After all, he's a, he's a spiritual man. He's a mature man. But heaven has, amen, their own choice. And they, and they override, they override, amen, the values of Samuel. They say, it's not this one. So the man was confused. So he didn't ask the question. All of the ones that I wanted to select, God have rejected them. Mr. Jason, are this all your children? They say, oh, but there's one more. But that one is not qualified for this kind of job you're looking for. Whatever God wants to do. <laughs> this David is just a, he's just a lad. He's just a boy in, in the backside of Samuel. So where you need to go fetch him. Who knows, maybe he's the one God is talking about. I mean, if, if God have rejected all these ones, you see, God does not look at things the way we look at things. When we look at things on the face value, we're going to miss God. Why we need to have all the standard values, principles of judgment, of good judgment, still don't depend on that judgment. The other have just said, why you need to have all the judgment? Because God wants us to be intelligent. All right, He didn't give us it, God didn't give us brain, amen, to be to, you know to to be you know to be trampled upon by men. No, He wants us to be intelligent. You, you know, you make decision by intelligence. But why you are making that intelligent decision? You're also listening. You know, one thing that I do when I need to buy something, I know what I want to buy. But even when I get that, I say, Lord, Lord. Is that, do you really want me? Just give, let me know. Do you want me to buy this? Is this what you want for me? And 
different. Of course, I have, I, have, I have a value that defines what I need for myself. If it's not promoting the kingdom, if it's not going to, even if it's a shirt. You see, when I bought this jacket, <laughs> I bought it because I know it's going to promote the kingdom of God. If it's not going to promote it, what, 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 what would I be doing with it? What would I be doing with it? It is not the cost that matters. We need to do the work. If it's not going to do the work, I don't need it. You see, you invest into what will promote your sense of obedience, your sense of work with God. That is how God wants us to live life. I don't buy things or do things, you know, so that, you know, I, I give this impression. No, no. Who, who is making an impression? <laughs> who is making an impression? Who do you want to impress? I know some people will not agree with me, but, but that's your own value. This is my value. This is how I trust God. This is how God deals with me. Everybody must have the way God deals with them. All right, yeah. If something is going to advance the will of God and they say 60,000, if I have it, ah, I'll be the first to buy that thing. But if something costs 30 rand, but I know this thing is not going to advance the will of God, you cannot change my mind to buy it. I'm, I will walk away. That's me. So it's not, it's not the amount. It is the mandate. It is the objective. It is the mission. You see, if your heart is not right, you'll be buying things you don't need. You'll be doing things just to please people. And at the end of the day, amen, that thing is going to go off trend. And then you have to be looking for something else. And then, yeah, This is why people are not happy. That's why you, you see men of God, they, they're forever hitting them head because today they, they're thinking how do would the church look eh, you know because it's about what people see what attracts them so tomorrow now people go to somewhere else that you know go to a church that is far better than you know where they, they're not going to come to your church again that's why it's all about competition money you know what can we do so we're forever doing things to impress you're going to get tired you're going in fact you're going to burn out the reality is the people you want to impress themselves, amen, don't know what they want. I discovered that a long time ago that if the people you want to impress themselves don't know what they want. Because tomorrow they're going to, they're going to change, <laughs> change you <laughs> like a garment. They, they, they moved from you to someone else. So stay with your value. The Bible says Jesus climbed to the mountain and his disciples came to him. If you're my disciple, you will come to this stream. If you're not my disciple, you may like it, admire it. You will go back. You go back to wherever you're coming from. That's just just how it is. All right. We're not sent to everyone. Amen. The prophetic amen, is a very unique ministry, but the spirit of the prophetic amen is one order. I've said it before. When we are all prophetic, we will all be galvanizing towards one towards one order called Christ. But the way we come to Christ may differ. When I mean the way we come to Christ, it means the values that, 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 that our preference. Some people will come to Christ through, you know, business communities. You know, you know this. They, they met. They met. The, they met God. Amen. In the in the bedroom. All right. Yes. In the business school. Yes. Because that's their field. God will use your field to minister to you. Who says there are no prophetic in the, in the business world? Who says there are no prophetic, amen, in, in, in the world of politics and, and governance? Yes, because God will plant in every field of life. God has planted himself there, amen. People will, be, people will be streaming into that order. Did you see what God did? God plant, you know, a, a woman who studied medicine, plant her, in, you know, in, in, in that situation where people were compromising. She said, no, I'm not going to compromise. That was God revealing, amen, the, his prophetic voice. I means the, the, the fraternity, amen, of, 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 of medicine and, 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 and science. God placed her there. That's what we're talking about. That's prophetic. In the day where everybody was shivering and afraid, she spoke with boldness, made her voice known to the point that even the president noticed her. That is being prophetic. You see, when we're kitted for that nature, listen, friends, everywhere you go, you'll be doing good. Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, went about, you see, Went about you will go about your business, your daily work, 
but you carry something that is prophetic. <laughs> something turn up in your workplace, you can raise your hand to heaven and say, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit, be gone. While you're putting on your suit and you're looking so well dignified, you can still speak in the name of Jesus. Because it's not, you don't have to go get a collar. You don't have to, uh, it's there. It's, it, it's buried on the inside of you. Like I said, I was sitting out there. I didn't need to be doing anything. In fact, I was just admiring, you know, the weather and, you know, the birds and all of that. When this guy came and interrupted me. <laughs> you see. But the power is resident. See, that's what we're talking about. The power of God. Was, I can't remember which year I laid. I prayed for. I didn't even need to lay my hands on the guy. I just held his hand. You see, listen to this. It, it will, if it's there, it will flow. Occasion will always call for what is there. If it's not there, be afraid. Because you're going to get before the situation. You don't know what to do. And they'll be looking for your head. <laughs> if you're in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar will be looking for your head. Yes. Particularly when you, 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 you've given the impression that you can do it, you are able. They said, if you cannot give the interpretation of this dream, <laughs> we will, I, will, I will kill all of you. Daniel said, oh, king, you're making too much and haste. Let me go consult my God. The king bowed to the God of Daniel. So the prophetic is, the, is, is an environment that allows the liberty of the spirit and the, and the express release of the mind of God. So when you're when you prophetic, all right, you don't need to go, oh, rabba, baba, oh God, what are you saying? No. The prophetic allow, when you're, when you're in that environment, amen, that is captured by the prophetic spirit, all right, the prophetic allow the express release of the mind of God. Thus hear the Lord. You know, you don't need to worship and wang, wind yourself in the spirit to be able to say, Thus hear the Lord. As I'm speaking right now, I can just tune into Thus hear the Lord. Hallelujah. And Thus hear the Lord does not mean that the word is more authentic than just say, This is what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Because that's another religious spirit. Somebody said, But he's saying God is speaking, but he didn't say, Thus hear the Lord. <laughs> the Lord help us. Okay. So, did you get that? The prophetic is an environment that allows the liberty of the spirit and the express relief of, re release of the mind of God in it, to be heard or to be known so that people amen, are quick to connect to the act in response to the will of God. The prophetic is the atmosphere that is strictly guided and governed but the ultimate desire of the Father. The prophetic is the atmosphere. Remember, the atmosphere is not music. The atmosphere is worship. Music is not worship. Worsh music can create the atmosphere, can create a sense you know, that allow you to worship. But music, amen, is not worship. Worship is when your will, amen, is responding, is, is, is yielded, amen, to the will of God. Worship is your entire life surrender to God. It's not, it's not the song you sing. Amen. It's not how, how slow the, 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 the rhythm of the song is. No. Worship is when your entire life is offered. It's been offered to God. All right. So the prophetic is the atmosphere. So because when I talk atmosphere, what comes to mind is, oh, I, I play nice music in my house. You can play nice music in your house. But if the atmosphere amen, is not conducive, if, if the atmosphere is, is, is toxic, what, to, what, 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 what corrupts the atmosphere is the state of our heart, is the state of our life. It's not the song we play. All right? The song connects to something in our heart. So if the heart is not connected to the will of God, you can play the best worship song. You have still not worship God. Because worship is when amen, the will of God has a say over your life, over your will. So the prophetic is the atmosphere that strictly that is strictly guided and governed. It must be guided and governed. When you, when you govern something, amen, you bring on that thing that thing under compulsion, under leadership, under divine administration. So the prophetic is the atmosphere that is strictly guided and governed by the ultimate desire of the Father. Not my will, that your will be done. All right, let's go on. The prophetic the prophetic is guided by sight. One, the prophet is, is guided by sight, meaning the, the, the spirit of understanding, meaning the spirit of understanding, amen, 
excuse me, meaning the spirit of the of the, of the, of, the, of understanding is what leads this order, this person. All right, the prophetic is guided by sight. All right, what you see, why what what are you seeing? What you see is what you perceive in your spirit. What you see is what you perceive in your spirit. What you see is what you perceive in your spirit. It's not what you you are able to plebo, plebo, plebo. Okay, you say, oh, that's a book. All right, you may not see anything before you, but you're picking something in the spirit. Yes. Remember when when the man of God, Amen, got captured by the spirit of Mamo. <laughs> he was going on his donkey, Balaam. All right, he was going on the on the donkey. <laughs> He was going, you know, when the Lord said, this is what I've declared, all right? You cannot curse my people. He was still going. He said, let me go again and hear what God was saying. Here an angel of the Lord stood before, amen, you know, uh, 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 this prophet on the road with a sword. Guess what? And the donkey was, and the donkey refused to move again. <laughs> the donkey said, I'm not going. <laughs> I refuse my head to be chopped. But the prophet who, who ought to have sight to see, amen, Mama has blind his eyes. He couldn't see what is before him. And at a point, the donkey had to, God had to give a voice to the donkey to speak. Master, why are you hitting me? All these years I've been obeying you. Why are you hitting me? And the prophet, <laughs> this guy, uh, you know, is a terrible thing to be captured by the spirit of Mama. Because they had bribed him. They said, you give him more money. You go cause the people of God. <laughs> he still said, let me see if I can go whine God. Why God have already spoken his mind. And he, he had the audacity. I mean, he should have fallen down on his, on his face and said, a donkey spoke to me? He, he replied, he, he pried the donkey. No, because you're not moving. The, way, the donkey said, can't you see an angel with the, with the sword in front of us? <laughs> I, do you get what I'm saying? The prophetic is guided by sight. When you lose your sight, you have lost your prophetic edge. Meaning, the spirit of understanding, sight is, sight in the spirit is understanding. Sight is equivalent to understanding. Alright? When you see things in the spirit, what they are declaring or what they're showing you is something they need you to understand it's not just to be able to identify an object in the spirit it's to be able to know what the object means or represent that is spiritual sight all right to know what that thing means that's why amen they had to take john they were showing him things all of the things that were showing john amen was to bring him to an understanding of the ascended revelation of christ Let me quickly go on to um, prophecy because we dealt with this the last time. Let's go to prophecy. There are three things we want, we're dealing with. We're dealing with the prophetic. We're dealing with prophecy. And I think there's one more we're going to deal with. Who is a prophet? All right. So let's deal with uh, um, prophecy. Now, I'm, I'm still on my uh, uh, YouTube uh, um, PowerPoint. All right. So what is prophecy? Prophecy is the unveiling or the bringing forth of the eternal truth and counsel of the Father's intention. When you read the word of God, I said the Bible, the word of God, amen, is prophecy. The Bible is a book of prophecy. All right? Prophecy is that which has been foretold, either fulfilled or in the progress of being fulfilled. Prophecy tells us that something was said. Something. Whenever we hear what has been said we need to find we need to know amen the reason the objective all right behind every spoken word there is a divine objective isn't it yes you can't just be speaking without a, an objective <laughs> you're just talking without without a purpose without an objective without an intention you're just talking anybody who talks like that uh, is a lunatic you've lost your mind because behind every word, amen, are well-defined, well-constructed, amen, objective. I'm communicating right now because the, the objective, amen, is for you to understand what, you know, the, the, the prophecy is, what the prophetic spirit is. If I'm just talking, I'm just talking. It, it means I have no sense of, you know, uh, uh, you know, coordination. I have no, it means I've lost my mind. Anyone who talks without a, a clarity, without direction, without purpose, without you know, a, 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 you know, a sense of purpose, objective, is somebody who suddenly who's lost, 
you know, his mind. Something is wrong with his, with his state of mind. And some people, you take them, all right, to a psychiatric, isn't it? Yes. So, so God doesn't just speak because he's God. He's speaking now. No. There's, there's a reason. There's a, there's a design objective behind amen, everything God said. And it's important that we understand that because if we don't understand that, then we, don't, we, we will not be able to run with what has been spoken. All right? So prophecy is the unveiling, is the revealing. We say Christ is revealing himself in this new day because he, is, he himself is the chief prophet. All right? he, is, he is the prophetic word that has been, uh, that has been spoken, that has been spoken, that has been unfold, uh, uh, unfolded in our day. All right? So prophecy is the unveiling, is the bringing forth, is the bringing into reality. All right? Prophecy goes ahead to speak the heart of God, the mind of God. Listen to this. I quickly want to speak on this as the Lord dropped this in my spirit. Whenever God gives us a prophetic word or God speaks to us in a prophetic you know, uh, uh, directive, guess what? Don't allow your mind, don't allow your mind to interfere with prophecy. Because prophecy in most, in most instances, in most cases, do not correlate to the present. Oh, I love this. Prophecy, in most cases, do not correlate. It, it doesn't seem to gel with the now. Prophecy is always, you know, about tomorrow, the future. And this is why a lot of people, you know, they want to know. They want to know. The, the entire world wants to know what's going to happen tomorrow. What, 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 what's, what will tomorrow hold for the, us? What will tomorrow hold for them? You know, people are very interested in wanting to know about tomorrow. But for you to want to know about tomorrow, you have to understand certain realities about what God, amen, have said in his word that allow you to be able to journey into how God will have your life pan out. That's if tomorrow comes. But God is a God who has spoken. In fact, he has spoken about the end from the beginning. God is not a God that just hide, you know, his intention for us. That's why, amen, the word of God we say is a prophetic word. Is a word, is a book of prophecy. All right? It's a book of prophecy. Everything about our Christian life, amen. You know, some of us, God have already spoken about what is going to happen, you know, regarding our life, our children in the future. All right? Maybe our country, community, God have revealed this thing. But because we are not aligning, we don't understand, we don't, we're not following. All right? We become, amen, we become a waiting accident or we be, even become an accident. You see, whenever we don't follow the directions and the directives of prophecy, what happens is accident takes place. But the purpose of prophecy is to prepare us to avert accident. The purpose of prophecy is to give us first-hand information. Now, the information is not for us to just get excited. Yes, you know something about your future, but you don't know how to align, how to prepare yourself, how to navigate amen, your life in such a way that that future amen, becomes a reality in its due time. And if it's something that you need to avert, you need to avert it because prophecy also is there to co correct us, amen. Is there to uh, align us, is there to prevent us. All right, those are the characteristics of prophecy. They are there, amen, to, to, you know, to, to either prevent you from doing something, all right, or to align you better to bring something to pass, amen, or to, you know, prepare you, amen, to become better in whatever it is. So you've got to understand the objective. You've got to understand the nature. You've got to understand, amen, the purpose of prophecy. I mean, Jesus understood the purpose of his prophecy. If you don't understand, you see, a, a lot of people who give prophetic word, they don't, they don't prepare the people for, the, you know, for, for, you know, for that prophecy. No, you, you, need to, you need to prepare people for that which has been spoken. So prophecy is the unveiling or the bringing forth of the eternal truth and counsel of the Father's intention. Prophecy usually contains the divine will and purpose of the Father, which either comes to correct, direct, instruct, or even judge. Did you see that? Prophecy usually contains the divine will and purpose of the Father, which either comes to what? To correct us. To direct us, to instruct us, or to judge. 
Most prophecies carry the default, the default ability of the spirit of life of the father to enhance. Listen to this. Most prophecy carries that default ability of the spirit of, of faith in the father to, excuse me, carries the, yeah, the default ability of the spirit of life in the father to enhance, to enhance our faith, our creativity, our development, our courage, amen, towards that specific assignment that, are, or that has been spoken. In other words, when we receive prophecy, listen to what should be happening to us. Your faith should increase. Whenever you hear a, prof a prophecy, you, you, because prophecy basically is the, is the revealing of the mind of God regarding the future. Right? Prophecy is the revealing of the mind of God, of the ways of God, of the intentions of God regarding the future. All right? Now we already know what's going to happen in the last days. All right? We say we, you know, we are living, we're tracking the last days. Okay? We're dealing with things called amen, the spirit of the age. Because these are things that have been prophesied. So we, we, are, we are getting ourselves aligned. We're getting ourselves prepared. We're getting ourselves in such a way all right, that the powers of darkness... We're getting ourselves aligned, amen, in such a way, in such a dimension that we are not captured, amen. We are not captured by a wrong spirit. That we are not captured by the spirit of the age. That we prepare ourselves, that we align our thought, that we align our mind, that we align, amen, with that which has been declared, with that which has been spoken. Spoken. That is prophecy. Prophecy comes, amen, to bring correction, direction, instruction, or judgment. So when we receive, amen, prophecy, we should, amen, receive faith. We should receive, amen, the ability to, you know, to, in fact, it is the spirit that injects the capacity to be developed, of course, in spiritual things. Prophecy also will come and encourage us. It puts us in a position where we receive, amen, instructions and, and guidance. We know how to, you see, where prophecy is, Purpose is inevitable because prof prophecy, amen, aligns to, you know, uh, 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 God's ultimate or God's counsel for your life. It's from there that you're able to define what? Purpose. You see why I said that we cannot understand purpose without being prophetic. Because, you know, purpose is about your future, what you want to do, what you want to become, right? But you cannot become or do anything outside the parameters or the desire, intention of God for your life. So within the scope of God's purpose, amen, you're finding purpose. You're finding God's purpose for your life. And like I said, remember, purpose is not a one-time thing. Purpose is not a one-time core. Purpose is an unfolding reality, unfolding desires and the intentions of God for your life. All right? Yes. Purpose, is, purpose are seasonal. All right? Today, you are running this business. That's the purpose. God reveals that counsel to you. God has given you that, you know, resource to run that. All right? In the next 10 years, a prophetic word comes. I mean, imagine you're running a home, your ministry, and a, a prophetic word comes and says, in the days ahead, the Lord will send you to a different place and you will become his handmaid and you'll become his voice there and you'll bring a lot of people to the position where they will begin to understand the instructions of the Spirit because he will send you to instruct them and guide them. But at this point, all right, you are running a business. But the prophetic word that you have received, amen, is speaking about a time where you're going to be training people and you're going to be leading them and sending them out of ministry. But guess what? What you're doing right now does not coronate to amen, the prophetic word. That's why I said you cannot look at the condition of the place that you are right now to judge prophecy. To be able to judge prophecy, you have to have amen, a broad understanding amen, of the ways of God. So you understand that the things of God amen, are seasonal. Therefore, you live your life amen, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a seasons of shift. In a seasons of shift. Amen. God comes to us in seasons. His ways are unveiled to us in seasons. All right. You don't. You don't come, get, get to a point and and decide. Yes, I have come to my. You know, to my place of rest. I've come to my finality. There's nothing like that. We are. We are on a journey. Amen. Our life is in a journey. No matter what you have, you're building a house. You can build your dream house. But don't, don't get to that point and develop a mindset that this is where I'm going to end my life. You have just, you have just 
brought a judgment upon yourself because listen to this tomorrow God can say this house you have built I know it's beautiful I know you love it yes but guess what I've got a job for you in, in Tanzania I've got a work for you all right in Nigeria I've got a work for you somewhere in Sudan but you've made up your mind ah finally finally this is where I'm no no you don't put a, you know a stop on your life because your life is the unfolding of God's counsel and will in the earth. Your life is the unfolding of God's counsel and will in the earth. So that's that about prophecy. I, I, I hope I've made this, you know, a bit clear for us to, you know, to understand. All right. And uh, next time we are going to deal with the prophet. Who is a prophet? All right, I, I'm going to stop here because of time. Uh, let's see. Yes, we've done an hour, 28 minutes. going to stop here. You're going to stop here. Right. Well, for those who have been watching us, of course, on YouTube, I want to believe that this teaching has been able to bring clarity and direction. All right, like you can see, I've opened to uh, uh, the prophet, who is a prophet. So next time we meet, we're going to be dealing with who is a prophet. But for now, all right, I'm going to be drawing the cutting. Thank you so very much for those of us watching us from Facebook. Thank you, Brother Derek. Uh, thank you, uh, Sister Dioni. Thank you, uh, um, Sister Tina. Really appreciate your connection, guys. Thank you so very much. And any other person out there watching us, my appreciation to you. Thank you. Uh, I want once again want to apologize for the delay. You know, we're struggling with connection and all of that and the network. But I thank God that I just felt like I need to try it again. And I did, and it worked. So we give thanks to God. Well, we will continue with these. These are beautiful foundational truths that we've, you know, given this uh, morning. I hope that we'll be able to go back and look at some of these things that we've talked about. These are beautiful scripture. May the Lord continue to help us to grow and develop in them. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.